Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to talk about key pair authentication in Snowflake. This is another additional security which you can add in your user accounts. In last video we talked about how we can secure our accounts using multi-factor authentication. This is also a kind of different authentication method which you can use when you are talking about service users. So suppose there are some users which are using your Snowflake account to do some operations. Maybe there is another web application like Django, Django based web application you are implementing and you are connecting to Snowflake. Instead of providing passwords, you can use key pair authentication. Okay, so we are going to understand what is the key pair authentication and how we can use that in Snowflake to secure our data and account. Okay, so let's get started without further ado. Okay, so what is key pair authentication? So as I explained, key pair authentication is something where you will have private key and public key. Public key will be attached to the user user's account in the snowflake itself and the private key you will have with yourself. You will keep it secure whenever you want to connect to the database in snowflake, you will use the private key to connect. Okay. So how you can generate them? So we are going to look into this screen. Okay. So here is the screen. So basically I have a terminal and here on the left side, I have this worksheet where we have, I have put already all the commands which are required to generate public key and private keys and there are two types of private key you can generate one is encrypted one and other is unencrypted so first we will talk about unencrypted so i will use this command and i will hit here i have just another uh, folder so i can keep all the files here so when i hit this command it will generate this private key which is not encrypted okay so without password it is not encrypted okay now what you need to do is that you have to generate a public key here out of this private key. So first you have generated a private key and now you have to use public key in your snowflake. So let's generate it. So we have to give this private key as an input and then we are asking it to output a public key. So let's do it. Now as you can see here we have public key and private key both. Now if I cat this public key, you can see this is a format. This is the prefix and this is the suffix. It says that it is starting a public key and it is ending a public key. So what you need to do is you just need to copy this content and then you have to use this into Snowflake. So you can set that public key like this. So as you can see here content without prefix and suffix. So I'll just replace this with this data. Okay. And when I hit this, sorry, I have to select actually and run it. So as you can see, it ran successfully. Now either we have to also verify that if the public key is set properly or not. Okay. So how can we verify that? So there is a way of doing that. So first of all, you have to describe this user where you have set the public key. Okay, so let's run the describe user. Now this has a lot of properties available, including this private key. Uh, where is that? Yeah, this one. So you will find this RSA public key effing, right? So this is SHA hash and base 64 value. So first I will use this select query. What it does is that it runs a select scan function and it takes the last query ID. So that means result of this whatever result you are looking at here of this command the same will be taken here and then it is trying to get the substring where property is this and length of this okay so once it does you will get this value now you need to copy this value okay and let's paste here actually we do not need to paste here because now to compare this value with this command so now I have to copy this command and basically it takes a public key here input it outputting der format and then it is trying to generate a SHA-256 value and then encoding as a base64. So whatever it does it should match with this. Okay. So as you can see so basically this snowflake also does the same and stores the value like this. It doesn't store the actual private key sorry public key you will not be able to see public key but here what it does is 
it stores this kind of value and that's when we got this value from the select query and now we are trying to generate similar query similar value here locally and trying to see if both are doing the same thing or not so now this is confirmed that this is the same value as looking at here right so now it is verified so public is set properly now we have to check running snow sql command okay so how can we run snow sql command with the private key so here is the help so this is snow sql help where you will see the account name you have to provide and how you can get the account name that is what is the account id and what is the region okay so in our case how can we get that so instead of name actually here we should have account so once sorry so first once you hit this you will get the account let me put it here and let me run the region so here is the region this is aws prefix is additionally added but the actual region is after aws okay so we have to remove this now and what is my current user we already know that this is hnm patel all right now as we have seen the format account dot region what we need to provide here is that like this snow sql account this one is we can put here and this one also we can put it here now this is the snow sql account sorry it's a export variable which you can provide here as you can see it accept if you do not provide this option and if you have already exported a parameter a variable like this no sql account using this command then it will also accept it you do not need to provide hyphen a and then provide the name right now let's build the command here like this no sql then yeah we already have this username then i will provide a as an account name so i'll copy paste and the private key path is another pair of option which you have to give like this and we have path available already so we can use like rsc uh, rsc key dot p8 we'll confirm what is the path let's see or oh, sorry yeah so rsc key dot p8 okay so we are correct now we just need to copy and paste here let's see if it ables to log in into that or not first of all uh, you have to make sure that mfa is disabled if it is enabled then you have to provide another option called hyphen m so you can get the prompt to enter the passcode okay but that is not advisable in most of the cases when you are running that locally right okay so why it is taking a lot of time okay let me change this to smaller case probably that is the issue and and also one more way to get this account id is that like copy from here and then you can directly paste here and then you need to remove everything else except this subdomain okay now if i run this let me see let me cancel it and try to run this one it's both on both of them are same but it should have worked actually i don't know why it did not work should i have to provide this double quote here because yeah actually it's logged in it takes some time in my case i don't know what's the reason in my laptop but whenever i try to even even i run snow sql help it also takes a lot of time now as you can see i'm i am able to see that okay now use database and then we can use demo okay then use schema and as you can see this we already checked actually but i'm just showcasing it and then you can run select star from employees and you will see the data now let's talk about the password rotation policy so here we do not have any password but the similar to password rotation policy you can rotate the private and public keys okay so to do that snowflake provides us a facility to set multiple public keys 
multiple in the sense only two public keys not three or four but it's it's a two so how can you do that so basically you have to generate another key pair okay private and public keys and then you have to set public key here similar to this alter user hnm patel set this okay so uh, anyways i wanted to showcase one private key which is encrypted with the password that also i wanted to showcase so let's generate second private key here so i will use this command this time instead of this one so it was saying that no encrypt no crypt and this time it is trying to encrypt it okay so as you can see this is the version there is uh, some additional commands options are provided to open ssl to generate private key encrypted so i'll just close this now and i'll generate this but before that i will call it encrypted here so that way yeah so as you can see it is asking us the password to enter so if you do not write any password and just enter it it still accepts that password that is called null password but that creates a problem while connecting through the snow sql so how snow sql connects to this kind of uh, private using this kind of private key is that you need to provide an additional uh, environment variable so it doesn't ac accept option so when you this set this variable like snow sql private key pass phrase what will you set there if you set blank it doesn't accept it but if you send set something value then there is no value you provided while generating this private key right so you have to provide at least some kind of password so i will provide test 1 2 3 for now so it is asking me again test 1 2 3 so now i have provided this password and it has generated encrypted private key so let's look at the private key is available or not okay so private key is available now so i will use this private key and i will generate a public key okay so here i just need to modify this and here also i will call it encrypted even though i'm just naming it but doesn't have to do with uh, actually the public key is not like it is encrypted or unencrypted but i'm just naming it because we have created based on encrypted private key okay so now as you can see we have encrypted private key and public key generated from that encrypted private key now we have both of them available okay now if you go further i have to set this export variable when i will try to connect it so i'll just keep it ready so i have exported it now what i will do here is that instead of setting the pub, uh, public key normal i'll set it public key 2 here it is look at this but before that we have to cat it again copy this public key replace it here and then enter this command so what it will do is it will going to set the second public key so now you have two public keys are available one is older one which was unencrypted and now second one we have added as an encrypted one so suppose now you have added the second one and now you try to log in with the new private key using snow sql so now you are trying to use that new key and if it is successful then you can read up the old public and private key so that's how you can rotate in real time production workload okay so now let's check it out the connection okay so now we have this private key so i will run this command the same snow sql command with encrypted private key okay so let me copy here yeah i'll just copy paste here and here i'll put it encrypted so basically this both will work as of now because snowflake understands what kind of private key it received it tries to check with both the public key whichever public key accepts the private key we uh, it will allow us to log in and access the data so now let me do this one so it should log in as we have already set the password as well let's see we will try to check after our read of uh, unsetting that uh, environment variable also so as you can see it, it has logged in successfully now 
the same thing you can do here also like you can select the database then you can select the schema and you can also check the data so similar to now what i'll do here is i will unset this passphrase okay and now i will try to log in it should not be able to log in because there is no passphrase available for this private key so it should ask that this private key is encrypted you should provide the password or it should ask me to enter the password okay look at this so it is asking for uh, entering the private key passphrase so if i have this i will enter this and it will again go back and log in okay so that's pretty much from this video i hope you found this video helpful so please hit the like button and subscribe this channel and liking this video will spread this video to wider audience they will also love to learn this right so thank you very much see you soon in the next video